Well, well, well. Hiya. Hiya, Mike. Well, you two ought to move in a bed and live here. Two beds, Mike. <laughs> well, anyway, we have a lot of fun. She likes the music and I like the beer. Yeah, and you both like each other. Huh? <laughs> How'd you guess it? Drop the chair and have a glass of beer with us. I know. I never touch the filthy stuff. How's the baby, Mike? Oh, sure you ought to see the little rascal. <laughs> He's getting to look more like me every day. The poor devil. <laughs> uh, someday you'll be having one of your own, Pat. And then you'll be happy. <laughs> well, good night, dear. Good night, Mike. <laughs> oh, here. Oh, Pat, there's nothing worse than a flat glass of beer. Or a flat tire. I catch on. <laughs> but I couldn't go another one. Darling, if you weren't so beautiful, I'd get me a girl with a larger capacity. <laughs> <laughs> I try hard, but it takes up so much room. <laughs> Please don't make me finish it. But I feel like being mean tonight. Well, then take me home. I'm a working woman and it's getting late. Oh, must we? I'm afraid we must. <laughs> All right. Herman. Yeah, check. something else? The check. Oh, check. <clears throat> Here's a taxi. Let's take it. No. It's a 20 and 10. Come on, let's splurge. Mm -mm. Let's walk. It's pretty chilly. I don't mind. All right. <laughs> Been perfect, Max. Good night. <laughs> mm, you're a rascal, Mr. Silver. <laughs> Good night, Pat. Good night, dear. Oh, Pat, uh, I couldn't find a cab. Do you mind if I call one? Call a yellow. They were stand a couple of blocks away. All right. Thanks. Must have been later than I thought. Hello, yellow? Well, send a cab to 122 West 110. Yeah. Okay. Mrs. McGee would have a fit if she knew you were here. Do you care? <laughs> no. Well, then let her have her fits. But you're not afraid to have me here, are you, Pat? No. <laughs> <laughs> you look lovely with your hair all mussed that way. Do you... Do you love me, Max? You know I do. We can't help loving each other, can we, Pat? Your taxi will be here in a minute. It can go away again. Hold me tight, Max.
something else that makes me very happy and it also makes our Max very happy too that when he comes home somebody should look into his eyes and look 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 already she's blushing like a bridegroom <laughs> don't be that <laughs> the shame of the gold our Max would show that he's very happy too but uh, he's a little bashful, <laughs> <He's> bashful. <laughs> well my kind friends I I don't think I, I got anything else to say to you except that the peaches is getting cold in the middle. Oh, no, Max, did did I say something at the table a while ago that that maybe maybe made you feel bad, huh? Maxie, I know. I know that you're in trouble, but your papa is older and and he knows what's best for you, Max. Many times I watch those young fellas that run away from from our people, and the finish the finish, Max, is always always not so good. Believe me, Max, your papa knows. It's all right, Papa. I understand. What's the matter? Huh? Oh, I was thinking about my father. I never met him, Max. Tell me about him. He's old, Pat. I'm tired. He's worked hard. Push carts and sweatshops and things like that ever since he was a boy. So is my mother. They saved every penny they could get their fingers on for me. So I could be a doctor. They gave me a dinner last night. They're proud of you, Max. Ambitious. Sacrificed their whole lives so I could be a great surgeon. You will be. Now that I've passed my examinations, they... want me to get married. They've chosen a girl. Her father has quite a lot of money, has influence, and can see that I get a good start. They expect me to go to Vienna, take a postgraduate course. 
combination honeymoon. I hope you'll be very happy, Max. I'll throw it all over if you ask me to. You don't mean that, Max. Pat, I... I understand. It's a great opportunity for you. You can't walk out on your family now. You're f fine, Pat. Mm -mm. Just trying to be sensible. Gee, Pat. I'm sorry if I... Please. Pat. Pat. Nick, old boy, you'll make a fortune. Eddie, how much I get? Quarter of a cent. I need your penny. Check. And you get a three quarters, huh? Well, I got a bite of gum, don't I? Ah. Say, Eddie, how many machines you got? How many relatives you got? Oh, I forgot. Well, that's the same with me. <laughs> I bet you won't forget the one you're going to collect to the pennies, eh? Ah, check. <laughs> Eddie, I fix a very nice steak for you. That's the best of the house? I don't fix up for nobody. Well, just so you don't poison me. A nice and pleasant chip potatoes. Oh, yes. You like to have a little uh, Worcestershire? Yeah. A little sauce? Mm-hmm. Eh? Not so far. Eddie, you enjoy yourself, eh? Huh? Atta boy, Nick. Oh, he's... That's okay with me. But she's a stuck. Stuck? What do you mean she's stuck? The door is jam. She can't come out. All right, let her stay in there. But she wants to come out. All right, let her come out then. But you could uh, climb up to it. Climb up to what? There is a window. Well, what's the matter with the door? I told you the door is she's a stuck. Well, can't you jam it open? I'm going to break the door. Eddie, please, you talk. Listen, listen, I came in here to eat a steak, not to yank dames out of ladies' rooms. Go away, will you? That's all right, please, you do for me, huh? Please. Oh, all right, where's all the... All right, lady, please, all right, just a minute. Come on, Eddie. Uh, you... Hey, the That's the window. I boost you up, Eddie. Dames can have more things happen to them. If they ain't running out of gas or losing their pocketbook, or they're getting stuck someplace. Look out, Betty, please! Look out. The window's stuck, Nick. Push him out, Teddy. You broke the window. Hey, hey don't break that window, Teddy, please. The door's stuck. You're telling me. What do you think I'm doing up here, looking for real estate? Do you think you could open it? I'm not even going to try. The two of us get down there, we'll never get out. Come on, see if you can reach my hand. Well, why don't you try to open the door, Hark? Come here, come here. Step up there. Nick. 
careful. Now what do oh, I put do? Put your foot on that box. Come on, you can get through here. Oh, oh, oh. heaven, this is awful. Please, Kenny! That's to my head. A big crowd. Oh, what? Can you hold it up there, Miss? Yeah. Oh, oh what, wait what? a minute. What? Wait a minute. And now stand on the back of my daddy, please. Now stay up there. We'll catch you. I'm coming down there. Oh, Fred. Uh, these women. No, no, Fred, to take it easy, lad. Come on, come on, you're all right. Wait a minute, do you think we can do it this way? Yes, we can. All right, wait, come on. Do we catch you, please? We got you. All right, all right. Come on, you're afraid. Oh. Oh. What you going there for, anyway? Why, I... Well, that's that. Thank you. Check. The lock of she got rusty. I'm very sorry, lady. Oh! Look at that. Oh, now what's the matter? Have you got a safety pin? Do I look like the kind of a guy that's carrying around safety pins? Well, you might be a little pleasant about it. Well, I still ain't got a safety pin. I got a pin, the lady. I fixed some up. I fixed hey, some uh, up and I got my business. In the meantime, do you, do you mind if I go in there and finish my steak? As far as I'm concerned, you can do anything you like. Check. Just a minute, eh? You, you come over some other time. I fix up a nice a free meal to you, eh? Yes, well, I think you ought to fix up a nice free script for well, me. Well, it's not to my fault, lady, please. That dog give me a lot of trouble. It's a be all right. You're going to tell him I'm very sorry. Okay. I'm sorry I was so cross. Yeah. Leave the door open next time. Are you going back to New York? Why? Would you mind if I went with you? Hey, listen, you ain't trying to pick me up, are you? <laughs> no. But I thought if you'd let me walk alongside of you, my skirt wouldn't be so noticed. Hmm. Where do you go? Uptown to 110th Street. Well, stick around while I finish my steak. I guess I can stand it. Here's to you. What were you doing over at Coney's this time of the year? Oh, business. Work there? Not exactly. I love to get down on the beach when there's nobody there, watch the water, think. Well, what do you think about? Oh, nothing. Just think. What do you mean? Listen, you gotta think. Beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Right. Check. Well, uh oh. Let's have another drink, will you? Orange, coming up. <laughs> what are you looking at? Must be pretty rough tonight, huh? Oh, one of them fresh guys, huh? Mm, looks like he was a fresh guy. What was you trying to do, tear up something? Oh, oh, what, what, oh, what, well, what, I guess we better be pulling out. Hey, mister! You know, it's guys like that that give this neighborhood a bad name. Do you live around here? I'm up a couple of blocks. I got a lot of business around here, though. What business are you in? Well, I'm a sort of a chain merchant. Oh, grocery. No, chewing gum. Chewing gum? Yeah, what's the matter with that? Oh, nothing. Here we are. What's the place? <clears throat> Thanks for everything. Check. Well, good night. Good night. Say, listen, uh, what about Tuesday? Well, what about it? Well, do you want to go to a movie or something? Oh. Well, what about it? Well, suppose you call me Tuesday. Oh, no, listen. When I make a date, I want to make a date. I don't like that policy of calling up to find out if it's on or off, you know. Why do you want to make a date with me? Why does any guy want to date a girl? Say, listen, you want to be complimented. Thank you. Check. Well, what about it? Check. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, Tuesday night. Good night. Night. Well, say, uh, what's your name? Patricia Smith. Patricia? That's a very pretty name. Eddie Doyle. <laughs> what's so funny about that? Oh, nothing. Well, 8.30 Tuesday night. Good night. Night.
I got back this morning. I know. Why did you come here? I had to see you, Pat. I counted the hours during the whole trip back. How did you get in? You bribed the landlady. How was Vienna? It was marvelous. You would have loved it. But let's not talk about that. You shouldn't have come here, Mac. Do you think I could come back without seeing you? Where were you? I've been waiting hours. Over at Coney. Coney? This time of year? Why not? Lonely? No. Just restless. You poor kid. Max, please don't. It's not fair. It's not fair for us to be separated, Pat. We love each other. We did love each other. Don't pretend. Oh, just excited at seeing you, I guess. Why can't we go on as we were, Pat? There's no difference. There's a lot of difference. You've a wife now. But I don't love her. You married her. You understood. Try to understand me, Max. I can't go on being a girl in the back of your life. I won't. I want a life of my own. What we had was fine, but it's over. If we went on now, it would be just dirty. Please go, Max. I'm tired. Goodbye, Max. I'll phone you. Don't, Max. I'm forgetting about you. I couldn't, and neither can you. And whether you let me see you or not, you won't forget me. Wouldn't you be surprised? It's you, huh? Blast it again. I owe Pop three bucks. I've been waiting for you to get the pennies out of that coffee grinder so I can pay. Oh, I was waiting for that. Say, listen, I got to take Sheen out of here because it's costing me about five bucks a week. No, it ain't. Did I miss you last week? Yeah, you missed. Hello? I asked you not to, Max. No, please don't do that. I can't. I've got a date anyway. Who with? That peanut vendor? Please see me, Pat. Well, it can't do any harm for me just to talk to you once in a while. All right, Pat. You're the boss. Time you was getting home there, son. Come on, let's go. Met a girl three weeks ago, and he ain't been the same since. <laughs> come on, come on, I'll call you a cab. Goodbye, boys. Oh, Pappy. Take good care of Al, Eddie. What are you reading? The sex life of the frog. Must be pretty snappy. Stay time, will it? Tough enough at night to carry you around, but I gotta. Come on, people are looking at it. Straighten up with it.
Hey, taxi. Come here, will you? Come on, come on. Come on, baby. Go home and get some sleep, will you? 142 West 120th Street. Hey, I have a kind of liquor. You're telling me, huh? Here, pay him with this. 142 West 120, got that? Now get some sleep, will you? I like it. Bad tone. What do you mean a bad tone? It's got a good tone. I know because I got a musical ear. Well, it's all right now, I guess. If you have any more trouble, let me know, Pat. Thank you, Lester. You're a darling. See you later. Bye. So long. Uh, who, uh, who was the guy? Boy from downstairs. Yeah? What's he doing up here? Came up to fix my radio, silly. What's the matter? Couldn't I fix it? I don't know. Could you? Well, certainly. I got a kind of a mechanical head. <laughs> and listen, there was no reason you calling the guy darling either. I didn't call him darling. I simply said he... Listen, it's the same thing. I'm telling you, don't have any men in your room because it don't look right. And what about yourself? Well, uh, I'm different. I, uh... Well, you're my girl, ain't you? Not that I know of. Well, you are, and I don't want to see that monkey up here no more, see? Well, I'll have anyone up here I like. Now, is that the right attitude to take? I'm not going to stand here and let you yell at me. Who's yelling? You are. I am not. You are. All right. That's the way you want to act about it? I'm just trying to take an interest in you, see? Go on, go ahead, get yourself a bad reputation. Have them in your room. Go on, see if I care. <laughs> oh, Eddie, what are we arguing about? <laughs> I don't know, but... But you started it. I did not. You did. <laughs> Anybody think we made it in this to it? <laughs> argue, argue. Come on, let's get out of here before we start it all over again. We'll have a snappy dinner because I got two tickets. A couple of tickets for a play? No, oh, for a wrestling match. A wrestling match? Well, I've never been to one. You ever been to a wrestling match? Well, they swell. Oh, I don't think I'd like that. Let's go to a movie. What do you mean, movie? Let's not rest and make some dinner. <laughs>
See, listen, you know, I made a remark up at your house tonight that kind of gives me an idea. What do you say we get sealed? Huh? Well, why not? Why not what, Eddie? Well, why not get married? Hey, Eddie, are you proposing to... Well, what the... What do you suppose I'm doing? Buddy, you took from Kale. Here, take another sniff of this, boy. Are you hurt, Eddie? Gee, what happened? Oh, the long sat on you. The long? I thought he was in the ring. He was, but the Frisco threw him out. And he landed <laughs> on you. <laughs> right on Are you. you all right, Eddie? Say, what kind of a joint is this anyway? You bring a gal in here for a needless entertainment, they start throwing wrestlers at you. Where's the big palooka? Ah, uh, take it easy, buddy. Here, have a drink. Listen, I don't want no drink. I got a right to be sore. Ah, uh, yeah. say, don't take it that way. Big, big. Yeah. How do you feel, Eddie? I'm all right. Them guys can't hurt me. Sure, you're a guy what's in good condition. You can take them, boy. Yes, sir. Wait, where's my cat? Here, I have it. Gee, it's a good thing it didn't land on you, honey. Say, he wouldn't land on a lady. What do these guys do? Pick their spots? What? Hey, buddy. We gotta be going along now. We gotta kid on the next event. Go ahead, go Take ahead. Care of yourself. Hey, Thanks. you better go out and get some air. Do you a lot of good. All right, thank Take you, care boys. Of be all, right? all right, I'll do that. Gee, I didn't see this. What happened anyway? <laughs> Was the guy thrown out of me and he jumped? Holy. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Hey, you look so funny. Well, can I help it if it starts raining wrestlers? <laughs> she even agrees that 5,000 people in the joint are gonna pick on me. Why is that? Didn't you see him coming? How could I see him coming? I, I was looking at you. <laughs> and, uh, by the way, I, I was asking you a question. When? When that big Dutchman lit on me. Oh. What's the dope on it? I mean, about us getting married. Eddie, why do you want to marry me? Well, well why does anybody want to marry anyone at all? I mean, it's, it's the sort of thing I, I like it. I think you're a great kid and... You're clean, good, and everything. Come here. What? What are you doing, crying? I'm sorry, Ed. Well, then what do you do it for? I don't know. Oh, come on, snap out of it. Don't do that. <laughs> well, look at me. What about it? Well, let me think about it, Eddie. Now, listen, I'm, I'm the kind of a guy that likes to know whether I'm going to get married or not. I know. Well... Say yes or no, because I've heard them both. I just thought I'd, because that's the proper thing to do. And, well, I'd like to know if I could get back to my regular eating again. You know, when I first met you, I had a, an awful healthy appetite. Well, I'll let you know tomorrow night, Eddie. Well, to make it longer, will you? Because those kind of nervous, high-strung fellas. <laughs> what? Kiss me. Sure. There you are. Eddie, do you know that's the first time you've ever kissed me? Well, it's all right, ain't it? Sure. Well, let's go. Just because she likes flowers, there's no reason to turn this joint into a fairy palace. Well, we gotta make it look like an engagement party, don't we? Well, how do you know she's gonna marry you? Listen, they always say I will let you know when you first ask them. They never say yes right away. It's a system with them. She'd have says no, wouldn't she, when I first asked her if she wasn't gonna say yes, wouldn't she? No, I don't know. It's too complicated. Oh, away with them, you know. Uh, I know women, I guess. <laughs> what time's the gang coming? Eight o'clock. Uh, and she breezes in here at 8.30. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always dangerous to surprise girls, and sometimes they don't like it. Yeah, not this one. She's regular, boy. Yeah, I heard that before. Hey, give me a glass, will you? All right, here. Matter. Matter. <coughs> What's the matter? Oh, this is great. This is the best I've ever made. Boy, oh, boy. 
that the same stuff? It looks like that. <laughs> no! The bottom oh. of the bed is full. Taxi, lady. No, thank you. Please, Pat, I want to talk to you. I can't. I've got a day. Well, just ten minutes. I'll take you wherever you want to go. I may want to kidnap you, but I promise I won't. But I want to go to 120th Street. Well, later. I've got something to show you first. Well, Miss, I've got a date. All right, all right. Well, what's this? <laughs> You'll see. Come on in. But I can't, Max. I'm late now. Well, a few minutes more won't make any difference. Besides, it's it's terribly important. Oh, well, really, I shouldn't. But you will. Uh, will you park my car for me, please? Yes, sir. Now what happens? Uh, nothing. We're home. Max, you're crazy. <laughs> sure. But sometimes it's nice to be crazy. Take off your wrap. <coughs> Come on, take it off. Have a drink? No. Oh, Pat, don't be a wooden shoe. Well, I want to go to... The 120th Street, and I'll see that you get there. But first, be a little nice to me. I haven't seen you in weeks. And after all, I'm not a musical comedy villain, you know. Well, just one little drink, then you take me back. You promise? Sure. Go on, take off your wrap. Will you? Listen, I put a nickel in. I've been putting nickels in there all night. I, I know it's the right number. Don't you think I know what number I'm calling? All right, just keep ringing, will you? Come on, Eddie, here's some fun. We'll be here. She's only an hour late. Now, what's an hour to a tomato? I know, Al, but maybe something happened to her. No, she just wants to keep you waiting. I know women. Come on, hang it up. You're the way inside there. Come on. Come on. The game's waiting. Come on. Hasn't a great deal of money. <laughs> Big, nice, real. He asked me to marry him. I see. What are you going to do? I don't know. Does he know about me? No. Are you going to tell him? I don't know that either. Hey. Where are you? I'm downstairs. I, I, I thought maybe she couldn't find the place. Is the number still out there? Yeah. Well, then this still must be the place. Come on, snap out of it. Let's have a drink. What do you think could have happened to her? Well, she's still jumping. I don't mind, but, you know, it's, it's kind of embarrassing. Well, it, it looks as old I have to handle the situation. What are you going to do? Come on. Hey, fellas, hey. So wait a minute, quiet. Hey, fellas, listen, now, wait. Now, wait a minute. Eddie's girl give him the go by, so it looks as though we've got to find a new bride to be. Now, the line forms on the left, girls. Come on. Come on, Over here. Hey, I I'm sorry, Eddie. I was just trying to kid out of it. Oh, that's all right, Al. Well, maybe she didn't know it was important. You know, it was a surprise on her. Yeah, surely. Maybe, maybe something else came up, huh? But, gee, she could have phoned, though. Well, girls are funny like that. You remember, Martha? She stood me up four nights in a row and then borrowed ten bucks from me. But what a personality. <laughs> hey, where are you going? I'm going to find her, Al. Oh, 
I should have married you, Pat. But you didn't. Oh, I don't blame you, Max. But I've got to make a decision. When something dies, you don't go on having funerals. Just cry a little and forget about it. Well, I suppose I should be as regular as you were. You could help me, Max. All right, Pat. I will. Okay, then. Eddie, please listen to me. Well, who uh, who was the guy? It was Max, Doctor Silver. Mm, I suppose you're going to tell me you're sick, huh? No, Eddie. Don't you know that you're supposed to have a date with me tonight? I couldn't help it. Just as I came out, Doctor Silver came along and he offered to drive me up. Then we got to talking and I forgot all about the time. He's an old friend of mine. I'm awfully sorry, Eddie. Okay. Eddie, please, won't you sit down for just a minute? Gee, Pat, uh, if, if you don't want to bother with me, well, just say so. And if, if you got other ideas, well, that's okay, too. But I just want to tell you that, that I fell for you right from the start. And I knew right off the bat that, that you was on the square. <laughs> of course, I don't know anything about this lovemaking business. I ain't much of a guy, either. But, well, I, I haven't got a lot of money, I haven't got a car, but I got a good business, and, and I'm going to make good. And I know that I can make you happy. So, I, I just want you to know that, that I'm nuts about you, and, well, you, you can let it go at that. And you want to marry me? Well, that's a general idea. Gee, Eddie, I think you're swell. That's about all, huh? No. When do we get married? Yeah. Do you mean it? Mm -hmm. Oh, gee. <laughs> A half impediment, why ye may not be lawfully joined together in matrimony, you do now confess it. For be ye well assured that if any persons are joined together otherwise than as God's word doth allow, their marriage is not lawful. Edward, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her, so long as ye both shall live? I will. Patricia, wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband? to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him, so long as ye both shall live? I will. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? Please. Yes, sir. With the bat? What? Show this party up to the bridal suite.
Anything else, sir? No, that'll be all. How about a little ice water, sir? Uh, what? Oh, oh, yes. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Well, here we are. Not a beautiful joint, is it? I think it's fine, maybe. Oh, uh, what we help you with your coat? Yeah. What's the matter, honey? Oh, listen. Don't be nervous. Everything's going to be all right. Gee, sweet. What the? We don't have to stand for that. Hello, Clark. This is Mr. Doyle. Say, listen. There's a party going on next door here. They're making an awful racket. What's the idea? Well, listen, I want another room. Sorry, but that's the only room with back do. Yeah, it's also a pretty kettle of fish. But I can't do anything about it. Well, how do you think we're going to sleep? Uh, well, you tell them to keep quiet, will you? All right. Ah, oh, shut up, will you? Tough guys. Hey, keep quiet in there, will you? Oh, I'm not going to You'll find the Betty. I don't. Oh, she it kind of spoils things. I mean, this is our wedding night with all that racket in there. What it makes it seem like a... Well... I understand, Eddie. Sit down here. I want to talk to you. Talk? Sure, what do you want to talk about? Well, something I want you to know. Thanks. That man you saw in the car last night wasn't just a friend. He used to be my... my sweetheart. Of course, that was before he married to please his family. He's a doctor now. Very fine doctor. We were very much in love, Eddie. I was crazy, I guess. Bad. But I loved him. It didn't seem to matter. Do you understand what I mean, Eddie? Yeah, I get you. We're not really married, Eddie. I mean, we could forget it. Just because a man said a couple of words over us doesn't change things. And, well, if you want to, we'll call it quit. I'll understand. I had to tell you, Eddie, it wasn't fair not to. Johnny, you're running here anyway. If I want to go to an insane asylum, I'd have gone to one. <laughs> now I'm not narrow-minded. I'm just sleepy, that's all. I can't go to sleep with all that noise going on. Yeah. Yeah, I said so. <laughs> well, you better. All right, I'll give you ten minutes, see? If you don't cut it out, well, I'm going to take the situation with my own hands. Yeah. <laughs> You won't do me a good. Hey, Shorty. Tell me, what is that? Chocolate. 
I know it's chocolate, but what kind of chocolate? I don't know. Uh, yes, Snowball, bite into this. Now, tell me, what is that? Chocolate! I know it's chocolate, but this is a different kind. Tell me, do, do you like it with the nuts or without the nuts? I like it with or without nuts. It don't make no difference to me. Just throw chocolate. <laughs> Daddy, you've made him sick. Hmm? What's the matter, honey? Are you sick? My stomach. Oh, you poor little fellow. He's my brother and he's always sick. Why, that can't hurt him. That's the best chocolate made. Eddie, you should have known better. There. Now, you take him home and tell his mother to give him a good dose of castor oil. Oh! Castor oil! Now, darling, you're not going to cry in front of all these big boys, are you? Oh, he's always crying. Well, you tell his mother that he ate too much chocolate. He'll tell her. He tells her everything. Come on, Eddie. Hey, couldn't she give me something besides castor oil? You tell her to put a little chocolate in. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, go ahead, boys. Run along. That's all for today. Drop it, Snowball. Put it back. Warm. Whenever you want to do any more tapping, just call me. My time is your time. Now, all you got to do is whistle one time, and I'll be here. Goodbye, Mr. Eddie. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Snowball. <laughs> now, Eddie, what's it all about? Well, you see, I'm making chocolate bars. These are for those chocolate machines. I was going to surprise you, but you, you walked in on me. <laughs> and mind you, these are five-cent machines. You see, before when I made a quarter of a cent on the gum, and with these I can make two and a half cents. So I figure if I get 200 machines around, well, I'll make ten times as much as I could on the gum. <laughs> but, Eddie, what were you doing with the kid? Oh, I have them in here to test my chocolates. You see, I want to know what kind they like the best, and anyway, I'm making my own chocolate. <laughs> Eddie, what do you know about making chocolate? Well, I've been studying up on it. Say, I'm going to have a business here. <laughs> You're nothing but a great big kid yourself. Oh, uh, yeah, you just think so. <laughs> oh, I got a surprise for you. Yes, I'll probably kid you. What do you think I am? What? Incorporated. Incorporated? Sir, look at that. Now, you know something? You own half. You see, I make you the vice president treasurer because the lawyer said that's what you always do. Does that mean that I take care of all the money? Why, I don't do nothing previous. Eddie, I'm going to love this job. Yeah. <laughs> Come up for lunch in a few minutes. Look, look, look what it says. It says, the party of the first part says the party of the second part. Well, I don't know what this is all about, but you go upstairs. I'll be up in a while. All right, honey. Articles of incorporation. No all men but these present. Be the Andersons and residents of the state of this day voluntarily assuming a corporation under them, the state of New York. Oh, the biggest man in town, I guess. Thank 
Our x-rays show that she has a fractured spine. She should be operated on at once. It's a very delicate operation. Well, well what'll I do? It requires the services of a neurological surgeon. We'll have her sent to any hospital he chooses. Oh. Uh, do you know a Dr. Silver? Yes, he's very splendid. Eddie Doyle. Uh, uh, can I see Dr. Silver, please? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Doyle, but Dr. Silver's still in consultation. I can't... Well, this is about Pat. He, he knows her very well. She, she had an accident, seeing she got hurt, and she might die. Oh, I'm sorry, but I really can't disturb her now. Well... Oh, but you can't go in there. Uh, Dr. Silver, doctor. Uh, pardon me, just... Doctor... It's about Pat, my wife. You know, she she's hurt. She she was hit. Pat. Yeah. Where is she? She's at the emergency hospital. Phone the Trinity. Tell them I'm bringing over a patient. It's an emergency case, Mrs. Edwards. You'll have to excuse yes. me. Make an appointment for Mrs. Edwards tomorrow. Come on. Oh, no, sir. Oh, well, uh, you may watch from the gallery night. sleep. Oh, hello. Hello there. Look, can you pick that for me? Thanks so much. Hi. Say, Bill. Yeah. She gets off at 12 o'clock. You think you can get a car? Sure, I'll borrow Harry's. Say, but listen, don't pull what you did last time. What do you mean, pull what I did? You know. Oh, God. Please make a well, will you? Feeling much better, aren't you? Yes.
No need to worry. She's coming along nicely. I can't go on with it. I've lived in hell ever since you married him. I love you. Need you. I never knew how much until... until I heard that you were hurt. We can't go on like this. I'll get a divorce. And we'll be married. Say yes, Pat. Five gum machines and 62 chocolates. Yeah. And there's only about 120 of them to pay. I know, I know, but they average up, don't they? And besides, I got $300 worth of stock, and, well, there's, there's a goodwill. What do you mean, goodwill? Well, I mean that, that I'm satisfied. Well, I don't care whether you're satisfied or not. I'll give you 1400 for the layout. Oh, gee, 1400 No. No, I want 2000 Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll split it with you. Give me 1700 huh? 1400 or nothing? Don't be crazy, Eddie. How long did it take you to build up this business? Answer me that. Three years. What are you going to do if you sell it? Go back and work on the subway? Why 2000 ain't even enough. I know, I know, but I need the money, don't I? Yeah, and I know it. Well, maybe you can borrow dough enough to... Shh, shut up, Al. All right, you guys. I've been chiseled before. <laughs> Give me the check. All right, we called the deal, Eddie. Remember, no double crossing. Listen, I'm doing a sign, ain't I? It's all right. Give me a big shot, Pop. Then go home and murder your wife. They're all alike. Oh, you guys are corkers. All you need is a horse and a blackjack. Have Mrs. Doyle's bill, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's been taken care of, Mr. Doyle. Dr. Silver had that put on his account. I want my wife's bill. Well, I told you that... I, I don't care what you told me. Nobody pays my wife's bills but me, see? When I hire a doctor, well, I pay him. And, well, Mrs. Doyle can do what she pleases when she leaves here, but while she's in the hospital, well, I'm going to pay the bills. Well, very well. I'll see what can be done. Dr. Silver's here. Thank you. I stopped in to give you a ticket so you could go aboard by yourself. It'll save you any possible embarrassment. I can't leave him, Max. Not knowing where he is or what he's doing. Pat, you can't remain loyal to a fellow you can't even find. You owe something to yourself. You're not well. And if you keep worrying about Eddie, you never will get well. Pat. 
forget about us as Max and Pat. Look on me just now as your doctor. I don't know what to do. Oh, I do. And what's more, I'm going to see that you do it. You're coming with me to Vienna. And you're going to get well. And then we're going to be married. Oh, Pat, we'll have a fine time. And maybe... Maybe we can get back something we've lost. Maybe. You'll, uh, you'll see that she gets on the boat. We'll be there. I'll see you aboard. Don't be late. It's important. What bill did he have to pay? Say, you kidding me? Hospitals ain't free. You mean he sold his business to pay? Yeah, money? yeah. Uh, uh, sign this here, will you? Al, where is he? Oh, uh, well, uh, he will not be telling. He's very busy. Now, uh, sign this here, will you? Why, Al? Well, you're going away with another fellow, ain't you? He thinks that I'm going... What do you mean, thinks? You're not down here to take swimming lessons. Al, where is he and what's he doing? He's very busy now. Here's a pen and sign this. Look, see here? What is it? Why, it's for your half of the business. I thought you said he sold it. He did. That's the trouble. And if you sign this, they'll drop the charges. Charges? What charges? Well, when he hit the cop... Hit the cop? What cop? Well, the, the one that hit him after he socked the other two guys. Socked the other two guys? What guys? Uh, the ones that had him arrested. Arrested? What for? For selling something he didn't own. Al, where is he? In jail. In jail? Oh! Which one? Uh, 104th Street. Oh. And uh, look, sign us for the love of Mike before you have him hung. There's some mistake, Sergeant. There's yes. a signature right there. Yes, that's mine. Is that your signature? Yes, sir. I'm his wife. Uh, what's the bail? $50. $15. $50. Oh, 50 Come on, go on. These fellas call me a crook. I don't mean to fight. I mean, send me that note. Well, I figured that you... That I was in love with Max. Yeah. Oh, Eddie. Oh, I had to see you. It's no use. I mean, you... Devil, you... I sent you that note because... Oh, well, I don't blame you. I mean, Max is a swell guy and he's done so much for you. And... Eddie, I don't love Max. It's you. 
Oh, please believe me, darling. I haven't been able to... Have you, honest? Oh, of course I have. You've been so silly. Well, gee, I didn't know. I, I yeah, thought what I thought you could have... Gee, thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Come on. <laughs> and now we have to start the business all over again. Yeah, but I got a new idea. A dime machine. A dime machine? Sure. You put a dime in a slot and you pull the handle. What do you think happens? What? A spray of perfume comes out. Perfume? Certainly. Before I get through, I'll have the whole New York smelling like a lily. 